Hello and welcome to We Got a Podcast, a podcast about Dragon Ball from A to Z, from Earth to Namek to Sadala. We cover it all. My name is Randy. And I'm Doug Chan. <laughs> I'm always excited for what you're going to come up with in those like two seconds you have. So that's always <laughs> great. We're the world's strongest under the heavens duo here every other week to talk your ear off about fights, goofs, and everything else in the Dragon Ball cosmos. Doug, what's new? What's going on? How are you doing? Hey, man, I'm good. I'm getting ready. At the time we're recording this, it's going to be Memorial mm-hmm. Day weekend. So I went to the grocery store, got some snacks going for the weekend just to be nice and just stay home, be chill. You got a big sack of goodies I saw. You showed me all the snacks yeah, in your bag. Yeah, I showed you. I got Airheads. I got white cheddar popcorn. Oh, my Doritos God. Doritos were on sale. Oh, my God. Dude. I, I had to resist the urge to go walking down the aisle, like, maybe just, just two bags of chips. You know, I don't want to <laughs> any more. And they will be destroyed if I if I have them in the house. I need to have self control while I'm buying it. Right. Yeah. Very true. But then of course I go up I go up to the register and I'm, I'm like putting all my food up on the on the belt and I'm like oh this is all snacks <laughs> and like one thing of like chicken that I'll eventually cook throughout next week maybe. Right. You're like yes, hello. I am a thirty something year old man and I am responsible <laughs> yeah. with my diet. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Holidays don't. They don't count. It's fine. It's ho- Every day's a holiday for me, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, how have your holidays been? Been doing anything fun? What are you watching? You're sitting down, going to watch some movies this weekend. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. I might watch... Uh, I downloaded a Jackass 4 for mm. forever or whatever. want to see how that how that is. I've been watching uh, this guy uh, play Azura's Wrath, and I've, I've oh. never seen or played that game before. Have you played it before? I've played, like, the first couple of chapters. It's buck wild. It's awesome i played the demo back uh when it first came out on the ps3 mm-hmm. um and and this guy it's his name's uh max he's kind of famous on youtube i don't know maximilian dude yeah yeah yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah he's yeah. so great he's such a great guy in general he is but uh i i, I i'm watching him his playthrough and yeah the story he, he's playing like a, a a remake not not a remake but like a a fan like recreated it with like better quality and frame rate and it's what it's it's like a, like a super great emula- emulation of it and uh oh, it's, okay yeah it's, the game itself the cutscenes and everything is so awesome. Yeah, they just get you so amped up. It's it's literally like Dragon Ball Z shit, just done. It feels like it's it, you, the main character is Broly. Like he, like Max even mentioned, like this is just Broly. If he if if he was in Azura's <laughs> Wrath, and it's like oh my god, it totally is. Yeah, because I believe it's made by Cyber Connect too, who did all of the uh, Naruto Ultimate Ninja the Naruto Storm games, games and, and some Dragon Ball games. Yeah, that's what it wants. Yeah, yeah, Kakarot. Yeah, yeah, no, and like it's just an awesome game. I wish I could play it again, but it's only PS3 or if you want to do the emulation, but it's also available um to play on Xbox. So if you own the 360 Probably version, on Game Pass. Yeah, uh, cuz it's uh also playable on Xbox 1 via backwards compat mm-hmm. uh Series S and X. So I picked that up and I haven't actually sat down and really played it through, but I definitely do need to do that. Mm-hmm, for sure. How about you? How's how things going with you? Oh, things are going good. Uh, I got my Steam Deck last week, so I will try not oh to... Oh, my God. Yeah, I'll try not to talk about it the whole time. I've got you on <laughs> camera, Doug. I'm, I'm so sure you're loving it. I'm going to show you this. <laughs> it's a big chonker boy. <laughs> like how, how in, in comparison like to the Switch, how is it about yeah, the same got, size or a little bigger? I got my Switch here, Jeez, too. Please so. pulling it out. Oh, God, it's whipping both out. Wow. <laughs> yeah, dude, that, that thing is amazing. It, 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 it feels... Because you can play almost anything on that thing, right? Like, it's it's everything in the Steam library. Well, I mean, like, not everything is compatible and works with it, but they are adding new compatibility stuff to it, like, every day. So it's... Well, definitely more than, like, what Nintendo's giving us. Nintendo's just giving us, like, barely anything. It's like, oh, you want, you want a remaster of this game? No, no, right. how about Earthworm Jim? There are... <laughs> currently i think 3000 100 compatible games and it's only been out since february yeah so. that's awesome plus all the emulation stuff i've been working on that and getting that working and it's uh, that's the thing too you, could, you could literally play almost anything if, if i was more into mobile gaming mm-hmm. uh, then i would definitely pick one up but no i i, I keep my switch docked 99 yeah, percent of the time that's very fair and then what is nice is i've also got a really nice gaming pc so i play on my handheld and then when i'm done it just has cloud saves and i can just boot it up on my pc and oh, it's like oh that's perfect you know just jacked up to the max so i feel like one day i'll switch over to pc being a pc gamer but i just can't it's expensive uh yeah so. i mean same if you like buy a new console every like f- so f- so many years but true i don't know 
It, it's just that I'm not like used to playing with mouse and keyboard, and I don't have a. I don't feel like having a controller always plugged into it. You know, I what mean, I, mean? I like just to... have a wireless Xbox One controller, and it's great. So that's all I really do. I don't do mouse and keyboard. Too it syncs much. up like Bluetooth or what? Uh, you can do it via Bluetooth. Otherwise, I have. I bought like the USB connection dongle so that way it's a bit more of a stable connection still still wireless though yeah absolutely so i'm sure they make one for the plays the sony controller because i'm me and xbox controllers don't get along i don't know if they have a uh dongle thing for it but yeah playstation 4 playstation 5 controllers work with fine with it even some uh newer games actually use the ps5 like haptics and the force triggers like death loop on pc you can play it on a with a ps5 controller and you get all the same features if you use a ps5 gotcha so yeah regardless i didn't buy a big tv to not use it so i'm right (laughs) sticking to whatever i can hook up to my tv which my pc is also connected to my tv but still yeah i don't know i I guess i'm just going around circles just like i don't want to be a pc (laughs) gamer just just let me turn on my console and give me controller and, and i don't want to do too much that's totally fine i guess i'll find a way to mess it up so <laughs> i get as much enjoyment out of turning on a game on the steam deck and be like oh wow it just works i didn't even have to do anything and then also all right let's tinker how do i get this thing to work how do i get the simulator working just perfect how do i get non-steam games like epic games to work in here so it's uh it's good for a tech pervert like me but awesome i'm glad you have that now thanks yeah i'm trying to have a personality other than the steam deck it is difficult it's but not happening so far yeah but we're gonna not talk about steam deck here we're going to talk about something else that people actually like to hear about (laughs) which is uh some dragon ball stuff this week we're doing a fun little thing uh we're gonna call it uh go to favorites so Mm -hmm. doug i asked you know what's your what's your go-to favorite dragon ball episode that you just like to pop in and enjoy and you told me it's Dragon Ball Z episode 64. And I was like, yeah, I don't know the numbers, man. You got to tell me more about what's happening in that. <laughs> and you were like. I immediately thought of Raccoon and Vegeta when they when they square off together on yes. Amicus. One of the. It just sticks in my head with just how fluid every, the animation looks. It's, it's Who's it done by? Uh, who's it done by? Well, it's done by uh, Toriyama himself from start to finish. He drew it all. Every single <laughs> I heard uh, of that guy. frame. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to say it actually has an episode title, which I guess we should probably give people that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Give me the deets. Yeah, I'll give you those deets. That sounds like a good thing that I could do. So it's called The Savage Raccoon, The Bad, Strong, and Outrageous Guy. Uh, <laughs> That's not bad as titles go. It's not like a spoilerish kind of title like they usually are. It's just kind of like, here's the guy Here's the guy that you're going to fight this episode, and he's, he's, he's scary. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly the, the thing that it gives us. So this episode aired October 24th, 1990, which was actually the week right after the Bardock special aired. That will come into play later when we discuss that. Yes. But yeah, that, that's... That's uh, I was two years old at that point when this episode came out. <laughs> yeah, same here. So um, I wouldn't have been able to appreciate it at that age, I'm sure. So I'm glad that I waited. And especially not in Japanese. Yes, that's also true. Unless <laughs> I was exposed to a few to this. barriers. And then I learned Japanese from watching it as a two-year-old. Right. We're, we're speaking Japanese now. You know it so well that you didn't even realize we're speaking eh? Japanese the entire time. Oh. Nani? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We'll cut that out. We're being total nerds. Um, so Go, more stuff about this episode. Animation supervised by my boy, Masaki Sato. You might be able to recognize some things of his, like all of the most killer shots from Tree of Might, my boy did. Oh. Good stuff. We, I got a really good batch of key animators for this episode working under him, like Hisashi Iguchi, Katsuyoshi Nakatsuru, who is like the character designer for everything, uh, starting during the Cell arc of things, um, Takio mm-hmm. Ide, Naoki Mihara, uh hideko okimoto and kazuo takagawa a bunch of those people still work doing dragon ball stuff i know that takio ide and naoki miyahara still does like dragon ball super and things like that so pedigree yeah. and god bless each and every one of them because they made a <laughs> fantastic episode fuck yeah they did so uh also fun to note this episode uh was made up of uh material from three different manga chapters uh, chapters 275, oh, okay. Vegeta's Quick Attack, episode, or episode, chapter 276, No Hope <laughs> for Vegeta, and chapter 277, Frieza Laughs, which is uses the first nine pages of. <laughs> Frieza Laughs. <laughs> um, but we've talked about this episode a bit, but Doug, why don't you tell people the synopsis of this episode for us? I don't have the synopsis, Randy. Well, you should open the doc that I shared with you before earlier today. That would give no, you... I don't have it. I sent it to your YouTube email, man. I don't know what more you want me to do.
Going all out at full power, Vegeta preemptively attacks Raccoon. Raccoon takes hardly any damage from even an attack of 20,000. Instead, Vegeta is one ragged. One ragged? <laughs> one ragged. There you go. <laughs> by by Raccoon's attacks. As Raccoon tries to finish Vegeta off with his special attack, the Eraser Gun, Gohan and Krillin attack him and save Vegeta, but Raccoon's single blow KOs Krillin. Gohan faces Raccoon on his own, but... Dot, dot, dot. Oh, yeah. We end on a cliffhanger of how is this going to go? Yeah. That basically kind of runs through the episode, but it skips all the awesome parts <laughs> of it. <laughs> it's a very visual episode. So, like I said, this was one of your go-tos. Can you just tell me, you know, why? Why is this one one of your go-tos? It, it shows Vegeta at his best, I feel like. Uh, a lot of his his cunningness, his, his resourcefulness in battle, mm-hmm. which I feel like we lose throughout the, the, the series and more so... At the end of Z and then Super, it just feels like at that point, he's just like, I'm stronger than you and I'm just going to like rage and go at you. But Mm -hmm. in this one, he's like, he's playing possum, Mm -hmm. coming out of it and blasting Raccoon in the face. He's like swimming underwater and just like kind of surprising Raccoon. It's it's awesome stuff. And it's uh, it's savagery that we don't really see anymore. Yeah. This is is the peak. This is when everyone was still like going on a krill and especially we're still scared of Vegeta. Like he he is still like a major threat. And he he actually really feels like it in this episode. Mm -hmm. He doesn't feel like just like another party member. Where he's, he feels like this threat that's not as big a threat as Raccoon, but still like there's crazy. that tension because they're not friends. They're just exactly they have a common enemy. Yeah, and this episode does a really good job of making Raccoon seem like a, mm-hmm. a monster, just a, a complete unstoppable like Terminator Two style Terminator, where it's just like it's just it's just gonna keep coming at you. Can't put this big guy down. It's so hard. No, no. I took some notes while you were watching, and if you don't mind, I want to run through those, if that's cool. Please. So, you know, it starts with, you know, Raccoon facing them down. He does his pose. He's got a really cool killer background while he does it, and then... His, uh, that, that's, that's his famous 18th pose. <laughs> that's his, his number 18. And immediately, in the face of all this, Vegeta just starts powering up and just goes right into this huge volley of attacks and yeah it's so incredible looking and like he's jumping around and like hitting him and different things like kneeing him in the stomach and then like picking it by the foot and throwing him around and i had to yeah. think like why hasn't any developer made this huge like opening salvo of attacks like an ultimate move by vegeta in yeah. any of these games like instead of big bang you attack can... have him do this this is sick i mean i feel like they must have in some games i don't know but yeah you're right well i guess because he uses the environment a lot like i love when when characters True. bounce off like the wall the walls of like mountains or whatever to like come back full force like that i, I that that give that you feel so much inertia from that and so much motion from right that, that it really strikes hard and i guess it might be hard with that section where he picks up raccoon this giant man and vegeta is a tiny tiny baby bird and like grabs him by the yeah. ankle so like i get it that could be tough if you've got like a yeah. similarly sized enemy but like i don't know you figure that out you could do it <laughs> I, I was telling you. you i was telling you while we were watching it that like when when people watch different forms of media and they they say like oh this is some dragon ball z shit i think this in particular is like what they're thinking of when when they say that because i was always thinking um i was thinking recently actually how people including myself at times would say that like oh this feels very dragon ball z but then i think i'm like when has stuff like this ever been in dragon ball z not not really ever i, I guess it's just kind of the i keep I hate saying it. i feel like i'm a 33 year old saying it but it's a vibe <laughs> it, it really is yeah like, it has the same like feeling as as it does even though we don't really see the same i'm thinking of like um what was I thinking of? I, I forgot, but I, 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 I've seen a movie recently mm-hmm. that it was like, oh no, I, I, like, I think it was Azura's Wrath, where I was like, whoa, this is some Dragon Ball Z shit, but I'm like, I don't think we've ever seen anything like this in there. Right. But after seeing this episode, I'm like, oh, maybe just, even in this one instance, it really it really paved the way. Just this over-the-top, non-stop attack is just like, yeah, that, yes. you know, I can see that. It's just that. like the, the, the speed everyone everyone goes, like when they're flying through the sky, and just like the, the little extra boost while they're flying to just go faster. It's just Mm -hmm. so much inertia. And uh, capping off Vegeta's attack, we have this big giant thing. He's like charging key in both hands and brings them together. His palms combines them together. And it's like, is this like a proto final flash? Or I had said Genesis flash. Because I think you had said beginning flash. I'm like, let's build on that. Flash, Genesis flash. flash. And then you came up with Genesis flash. (laughs) (laughs) It's sick because this is like, in hindsight, you can't not think about like Final Flash. Like that's oh, that's 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 kind of a a, like a build up to it, I guess. Mm -hmm, Because even though this one is more more like I think uh, chaotic because it just kind of like explodes out of his hands as opposed to like a a huge like a concentrated blast. Mm -hmm. This one is just like like takes up 
85% of the screen when he blasts it. And then he's like charging it more. It's just more, more, more. And like makes it yeah, go bigger. I love just... when he like, he like pushes it forward like a little bit, but it's enough to show like just, he's just pushing more and more out of it. It's so great. Mm-hmm. He's going what, all out. What I love about uh, this episode is 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 all the Ginyu Force calling him Vegeta-chan. Yes. <laughs> and I think the best part is that they're not saying it. I, I think it, they've been saying it the entire time they've known him mm-hmm. that it's not – it's less of, an, less of an insult. And it's just like the way that they talk about him now. Because when – of course, Raccoon is calling him Vegeta-chan to his face and it is demeaning. Mm-hmm. But then while I think Vegeta is charging up – you hear uh, Jason and and Berter talking to each other, and yeah. Jace refers to Vegeta as Vegeta. Oh, Vegeta Chan is actually powering up right now. Like it's, it's not like ridiculing Vegeta. That's actually what he calls him. And I was like, I thought that was a nice little detail. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. That's like this is he he is low on the totem pole compared to them, and they'll just call mm-hmm. him that no matter the circumstance. That's just his. That's just his name now, <laughs> Vegeta Chan. And then when he does that it's, blast, it's, no, go ahead. It's 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 so great in like just Japanese culture how how a simple adding of Chan mm-hmm. can be like a demeaning thing towards a, towards a male. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing like that equivalent in English. It'd be like if you called him just giving him a nickname in English, like like Veggie or something mm-hmm. like that. But there's no like what does it call like a not a surname, but like an added it's, uh, an honorific. Honorific. There's no honorific that we that in American culture that we like can just tack on yeah maybe like the letter y to some like yeah like i guess yep. but even that it has the same feel but I, I just think adding chan is just even better yeah it really really sells it um i really like when he does do that big blast that like you know he is going all out against raccoon and he does this attack and it doesn't care that krillin and gohan are in the way like they have to move out of yeah. it yeah yeah it's just like that. That's you see a lot of like how Vegeta has no like it's it's just he's just focused on the fight. How mm-hmm. he doesn't have any empathy because even when Gohan saves him, both of them are confused as to why the other one is reacting. Certain Vegeta's like confused. Why did you save me instead of instead of attacking him? Even though Vegeta knows that he's str- that Vegeta is stronger than Gohan and Krillin. Mm. Just the fact that they didn't go attack him as their instinct baffles Vegeta. Yeah. Like he Vegeta says it in a, like a mad way like why didn't you go attack them like like whatever but it I think that's just that's the core that's his core value that's not how he thinks. We're in and a fight. Gohan is just like yeah and we're in a fight and we need to just keep rushing him instead of protecting about others mm-hmm. but Gohan's no I, I need to like I'm, I'm 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 here to like make sure you don't die and I love that Gohan is just so polite he still calls him Vegeta-san yeah like such a contrast to Vegeta-chan is oh Vegeta-san mm-hmm. yeah such it's such a polite young boy it really shows you know uh it keeps inconsistent with Vegeta's character because even before mm-hmm. when he had Nappa and Raditz with him he like did not give a shit about them it was all about what they were doing and like conquering yeah and victory where it's like, what are? You, why would you even bother? <laughs> you know, because it's totally yeah. alien concept to this guy. Nappa's useless to me now, so I'm just gonna kill him because yeah. he's, he's useless. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's so weird because you wouldn't think, because you would think that oh, Gohan is useful to me because he can get me out of the way of this blast. No, he's just he's just Vegeta's just thinking the the main goal is to kill Raccoon, and you're not doing that by coming to me or whatever. Mm-hmm. But. I don't but- know. Turns out Raccoon lived, and as like the smoke clears, I say I do an impersonation of Raccoon in Japanese every single time for this. It's just like the smoke goes away, he's just stand there posing, just hi, <laughs> <And> <laughs> <laughs> kills me every time to hear it. It's so good. Uh, it's, it's like it's definitely what he what he's saying. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's so great. I love Raccoon can can rock every single haircut that he has in this one episode, yes. and he has many because of how many times it's been blasted off. He's got some fabulous hair man yeah and no no matter what <laughs> how much damage is done to it looks great you know the the, the hu- huge amount of hair cutting down to like a little trim and then to a little even smaller trim <laughs> even even with with no teeth that guy rocks that hair to you, so. <laughs> absolutely um Props. we have a, a a cutaway scene of frieza like you know doing an assessment of namek of like oh is this oh, planet yeah. any good and uh, you had noticed something because he brings up like, ah, oh, I'll probably destroy it and make it beautiful fireworks. Well, yeah, because he, he was mentioning how, which I thought was interesting, how, oh, this planet is kind of useless to me. It's it's not good on resources. I'm just going to send, we, we could use it to send exiles. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's already plenty of planets out in the universe that I can use that for. I'm just going to blow it up and just uh, 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 to make it look like fireworks to, to celebrate 
me acquiring the Dragon Balls. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, that isn't, is this, was this before or after the Bardock special? Because he obviously calls Planet Vegeta, like, look at the fireworks and all that stuff. And then you said. Yeah, that it was literally the week before that, that that aired. So it's kind of like this weird which, callback, you know? Yeah. It, it kind of makes it less special though it's just kind of like it's just like an instant callback to that mm-hmm. as opposed to i wish it was like a character trait in him if it was spread out more or if it were, if one was thought without the other or like further apart it'd kind of be like a like a like like make freeza more maniacal like oh my god right. he's scared about fireworks but now it's, it's it's a simple like oh they wrote it within the same week so it's not like that character driven but yep it's just more of a little callback uh when we get back- still cool nonetheless yeah still super cool i like that you know um, when we get back to the fight, uh, Rakum is still up and at him, and Vegeta's still gonna, like, well, I, even though I just kind of gave him my all, I'm gonna continue to give him my all. And I think that it's really cool to talk about Vegeta more, because uh, clearly we both like Vegeta. We both enjoy him as a character. Yeah, and I wouldn't call myself a Vegeta fan. Like, I'm not a person that, like, mm-hmm. obsesses over Majin Vegeta and all this. I don't know. Uh, he's not my favorite character. Right. But he, he excels in this arc. Absolutely. Uh, I really like that he's, you know, going all out because I feel like he's the only one, like, they can sense these, the enemy's key, but Vegeta's the only one who knows how fearsome this whole group is, and it yeah. shows in just how desperately he is going all out the entire time he is fighting, just nonstop, because yeah. it's the only he's way like they're going to get out mouse. of it. He's like a cornered mouse, and it's just like, you, you just have to use everything you've got to mm-hmm. to take this guy down. Yeah. Ab- it, it's still it's still not enough. It makes Raccoon so crazy of a monster. He's just it, it, it seems like um this 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 is like a trope that's always done where like, oh, you gotta make the characters feel like they're so weak compared to this guy. But mm-hmm. in this episode, watching it now, it's like you really feel that. You really feel the helplessness that each character is going through, Gohan, Krill, and Vegeta. Mm-hmm. Just like if we didn't know that Goku was gonna show up next episode or whatever, it'd be like, Wow, these guys are fucked. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? A thousand percent. I mean, granted, you know, we didn't watch the episodes previous to this, but thinking back to it, just before the Ginyu Force arrives, Gohan gets his power unlocked and Vegeta's like, oh my god, is Goku here? And then Gohan's there's like, oh, okay, well, he just got really strong. And then the Ginyu Force lands and Vegeta just immediately, we need to get the Dragon Balls and like... He's he's, scared. Yeah, he is terrified. And it's just a quick about face of just, we need to team up and we need to take these guys out. And you go from oh, Gohan could be formidable, to suddenly Gohan cowering in fear of, like, we are so screwed. and it's, You're so screwed. It's you, you can do nothing against this this behemoth. It's right up there with, like, the beginning uh, during the fight when Nappa and Vegeta first land, where everybody's getting taken out one after another, just Yamcha, Chouts, yeah. attention on, like, nah, we're just losing everybody. <laughs> like, this has never yeah. happened before. We're totally boned. Yeah. And it's this, uh, is this Nappa clone as well mm-hmm. of Rakum, <laughs> yeah. with the same kind of, like, just big build. It's like Nappa coming back to get revenge on Vegeta. Yep. Uh, <laughs> through Rakum. And uh, Krillin and Gohan know <laughs> that they don't really stand a chance in one-on-one fight, and they kind of if see... If Vegeta doesn't, then how no, can they? So. Absolutely not. So then when Rakum is unleashing his eraser gun they're like we gotta just like this is our moment krillin jumps on his head and like kicks him so that he like bites down on this blast and blows what a his genius teeth out funny move genius way to go krillin while gohan goes and saves him and like you said is you know like why did you bother saving me you should have gone and attacked him <laughs> and joined krillin for this you idiot and, oh my god the animation for all this in the meantime like throughout the entire episode the animation for all this has just been brilliant and seeing like vegeta's hair i know you were gushing over vegeta's hair kind of like yep. slanting over like because it's it's tired as as tired as vegeta is like you see that <laughs> it just looks incredible so many iconic shots even when the episode first starts vegeta just standing there mm-hmm. such an iconic pan up shot to him man i, I want a figure of that yes man gosh that would be so good so mm-hmm. many good visual shots on this i like that after that even more like Rakum still gets up he spits out his teeth and he just like casually turns to jason bada is just like <laughs> hey you mind if i take out everybody is that okay with you and like yeah I guess <laughs> is, that, is that chill yeah <laughs> well, what, what are we gonna do but you always chocolate parfait <laughs> after this and it's like yes <laughs> he is in such another level that even after all this he's like i'm not bothered like yeah you took out my hair and my teeth but like that doesn't hurt me <laughs> i love but then you bring you bring it like back to such a relatable like to, to think of them going out later to go get chocolate parfaits it's just i want to see that it's <laughs> yeah. just their job and then they have regular lives after not regular but yeah, mm-hmm. i want to see them go to like a bar and just chill and not even like a, they don't even go to a bar they're not like that they, they feel still feel like kids let's go, they go to, to a DQ. chocolate parfait <laughs> yeah they go to t- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they go get a what's what's the drink that they all get in Zoolander? The Mocha Frappuccino, oh, Orange yeah. Frappuccino. <laughs> I could totally see them doing the Jitterbug. 
<laughs> oh my god is are these people just zoolander characters <laughs> they're just the zoolander. they're dumb sexy models oh my it's god they're dumb sexy models. they're doing poses you know they've all got to have their I gotta looks make a down. trailer i gotta make a trailer now yeah go <laughs> go take the zoolander trailer and replace it with footage of the guinea force <laughs> could be a tiktok real short hilarious so funny yeah he turned left i don't know include that <laughs> but i like he turned left He's like, okay, cool. I'll take these guys down, and then just one kick, Krillin's down. Like this With is his toe. He just he one called, toe. He called. He called the move like a mega fire toe attack or something like that. And it, it really like it to, emph- to emphasize that he's just using his toe because he knows that Krillin is weaker. So it's just like mm-hmm. I don't want to. I want to play with him. So let me just use my toe. Whoops! I, I it was too strong for him. Yep. Like that's so. That's when you know. Like fuck, he's on another <laughs> level entirely. I think this is also one of the big moments of the joke that Krillin always goes down easy and it's, you know, is useless because he even brings it up himself. He's like, I just got all of my power unlocked by the by the elder. Yeah. And this I went down in one hit. This sucks. (laughs) I think it only it only it only feels that way, like in hindsight or or like someone out in the someone like afterwards, like made a joke about that. And you then you just scrub through and see when he gets knocked down. Mm -hmm. But this didn't feel like that while watching it. It just felt like, you know, these are just people that aren't gods being killed by this monster, being hurt by this monster. So it's Mm -hmm. it's, it's really clearly it's a bad rap. And it's just this doesn't feel like that was what I'm saying in this moment. It just it just feels like this is what naturally would happen to this to this character. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, but then it kind of ends with go on. Like, I guess I'm facing him down one on one after seeing everything happen the amount of bravery it takes i mean you can't be brave without being scared that's yeah. what it means to be brave is to is to confront your fears and the way he inches over or not inches like he's like he's pissed off of course cuz krillin is down mm-hmm. he's mad but he knows it's it's hopeless but yeah. he still walks forward he's still going to Raccoon. Mm-hmm. and that, that's gohan is such a fantastic character for that alone yeah i see why this is a really good go to episode we've got a lot of great animation really great shots really great character moments between everybody we got yeah. comedy man standout episode i'm surprised we talked a lot about just a 20 minute episode too i'm like is this gonna be enough but no we can gush yes i'm sure we can gush about every episode that we see but man <laughs> one thing i wanted to what hit on with like when you said comedy is like it's it's kind of weird how a different medium like there's the manga and then there's the anime mm. manga obviously doesn't have music and so some some comedy i, I feel works better because the music in the anime sometimes doesn't jive with it as well. Like it's mm-hmm. like when Rakuma is knocking out Krillin and all this stuff, it has like a serious kind of like maniacal. This guy is, is this, this Rakum guy is, is crazy strong mm-hmm. music. But if you read it in the manga, you can kind of interpret it your own way with your own, like, not music, but you, you kind of, like, yeah. you read it differently. It's you not read it more instilling like, as, like, that funny. tone for you, so exactly. you have to interpret he's it using, yourself. He, he called his, his his move the super toe flaming attack kind of thing. Like, that's mm-hmm. kind of funny in itself and all the poses and everything and throughout, throughout the episode. But, you know, I think music sometimes in anime sometimes might be a detriment. Yeah. I mean, because it kind of forces you into their interpretation of it versus getting to do your own. Yeah, and that's just the form of the media. It's not anyone's fault. Like, there's not. it's not like you can cut music off, like, at a certain... You can't cut it off too abruptly mm-hmm. to put in a different thing. It just doesn't work that way. It's just the, the type of medium. And so you, you can enjoy it both manga and anime way. And it's it's just... It, it's hard to translate comedy because of music, I think, sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, at the end of our notes here, it's just, what did we like? What didn't we like? Uh, I don't know, man. I liked everything. I can't really say that there's a lot yeah, about I was, this. Yeah, I, I was like, I can't think of anything I didn't like. It's um, great start. I, 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 di- I didn't like that we had to stop because I wanted to keep watching more <laughs> now because I was so engaged. Well, the bummer. Like, oh, come on, Goku. You got to get there. The bummer is like the next episode isn't going to look as good. Like, I know that that episode does not look great. There's a lot yeah. of weird faces in that. Because we saw the next episode preview. We stuck around because we, we wanted to hear popcorn shower. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we needed naturally, to get it, some. it rolled over into the next episode previews and we're like, wow, it doesn't look anywhere near as good. No. Very few episodes look as good as this one, but. You know, yeah. what can you do? This is what you get when you make I'm it. I'm glad they went all out for this one. This was a great episode to do it for because yeah. of all the action. Which is kind of wild considering just the week before we had the Bardock special, which also was incredible. Had a lot of the same yeah. animators working on it. So, oof, they must have been yeah. working on that one ahead of time a good bit because otherwise I don't think that's possible. Unless, you know, you're working, I don't know, 100 hours in a week, which who knows? I mean, for sure. I don't think we have the documentation back from 1990 to really know what was going on, but I certainly don't. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Cool. (laughs) Well, uh, we gushed a lot, but we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and I want to 
hear what other people have for their favorite go-to episodes and uh we've got some other stuff so we'll be right back awesome Alrighty, we are back, and now we get to hear what you had to say about your favorite go-to episodes for Dragon Ball. Uh, first up, we had Gabe at Damon Core. What up, man? Long time mutual. Uh, had to say, less of a go-to uh, out of actual sincerity, and more like it became my go-to because it would always be on Toonami back in the day. The Punch Machine episode during the 25th Budokai. Just a solid running gag with everyone holding back until Vegeta <laughs> just destroys the machine. Yeah. That one I like, coming back to the, to the music part of that, that episode is intentionally meant to be like funny. Whereas mm-hmm. the Raccoon one, it, it's hard because it, it's definitely supposed to be like fearful and a little bit comedic. Mm-hmm. But uh, so that, that that's where that conflict comes in. But that episode, the Punching Bag Machine, the Punching Machine one was so great because it's meant comedy wise and it so really works. Yeah, because there's no threat going on at that point in the series. They're just right. getting shenanigans. shenanigans and having a good old good old fighting tournament. You know how it is <laughs> was back in the old days. Mm hmm. Uh, Jake Pay at Jake Pay 16 says, I always loved the episode of Piccolo versus 17. Probably one of my favorite fights and ends with, uh, yes. Tension Han being a badass one last time. Yes. That one is good. Oh my God. That I'm one not, is so good. I'm not a fan of some of like the, uh, animation style in that episode, but the actual fight and like the content is just bucking balls out awesome. You know, the weird thing is like last, last house is the one that is mm. kind of like the, the, not so great animation wise. Right. They always have the most fluid fight scenes. Their animation is good. It's just the the art style isn't great. The art style and the character reference, I guess, is just mm-hmm. like it's, it's it's utter garbage to look at. But damn, do they know how to like make things look fluid and especially in fights? Like I always think of that uh, Piccolo and Seventeen fight, and I think about the Vegeta and Cell fight. Mm-hmm. Like Vegeta's like throwing out fireballs in, yeah. that, in that one instance, and it's just it it it. It feels awesome, but doesn't look great. It's such a shame. But I think I feel like that's like a, a give and take. Like you had you had to sacrifice that to get the cool looks from Last House, and it's yeah, just a shame there couldn't be a, a good medium. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, everybody has their own strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, but that Piccolo and Seventeen fight. Yeah, like there was an AMV back in the day that I used to watch all the time that was just centered around that particular fight like that fight and then a little bit of like when cell becomes perfect like so that, mm. that little chunk of of episodes but oh man that used to be that, used, that was definitely like one of my go-tos too jake so yeah good call good choice uh lego at the lego fan 21 says not really an episode but sometimes i watch the bardock and trunks tv specials uh if i need to kick a dragon ball otherwise i just pick an arc such as the red ribbon red ribbon army arc or namek uh yeah the tv specials are always good they're you know they're a little yeah. bit longer and you get but, some, but not super long no and you're definitely you get it's all i can't even words you get to have <laughs> one solid episode where, like, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end, and, like, it has its story and it's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unlike what we did just now, which we watched one episode that made me want to watch more. Right. I mean, you got the rest of the night to yourself, Doug. You could just finish out this whole fight. <laughs> Damn. And and I might, I just might, if only I knew what, what didn't happen. But no, uh, the red ribbon stuff too. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, for me, I don't think that much more. I'm, I'm always so iffy on like, uh, I, I could tell you beat by beat what happens in Dragon Ball Z episode one to two ninety one. But Dragon Ball is still, I didn't watch that a million times, you know. So it's not as vivid in my head like what happens start to finish in the red ribbon arc. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Maybe I should. Maybe I start should start going back to to watching all that. I feel like the Dragon Ball anime plays a little slower to me. Like I. I would rather read the manga of that portion. Actually, well, I would rather read the manga portion of everything now at, at, at this point in my life. That's true. Uh, I think I've pimped it out before, but somebody, a brave, intrepid person, fan, uh, recut all of original Dragon Ball to only manga material, and it goes down from like 153 to like 80 something episodes. Wow. Yeah, it's real good. Uh, so I will point you to that if you wanted to just enjoy arc where it's much more compressed. Sometimes I think Dragon Ball plays well to a filler lifestyle, though. I agree. Because it, it, does, it does feel like it... it, it like it's fun stories basically but if you wanted to get through it quicker 
I think it's a good way to do it. Right. Maybe right. not a first time watch or maybe a first time watch if you don't have a lot of time, you know? I don't know your I life. I can imagine all these mega fans that have this time to do all that. God bless them. Because Seriously. It's, I, I can only imagine how much work has to go into all that. So it's very much appreciated. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Doug, it's your favorite time of the night where I where... get to ask you questions. And you get to answer Ooh, them. Oh, boy. I thought you were <laughs> going to say, you're going to make me read Dragon Ball Super. That's that's my favorite part of the night. Well, we'll get there. Uh, <laughs> we have to every time. I have a lot of favorites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so many good points to this. So, trivia time, Doug. Question number one. Are you ready? You got your thinking go. cap on? I got my thinking headphones on. Good. Perfect. Question one. True or false? You got a 50-50 chance here. Nice. I like my odds. Raccoon's original Japanese voice actor was replaced in Dragon Ball Kai. True or false? Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can tell just by listening to this episode. It was just very, uh, just how great it was. And also hearing Ryo Horikawa, his voice back then, too, Mm. before he, I don't want to, like, roast on him. I mean, he's just old now. That's just what age does. Time comes for us all. Also, cigarettes as well. But, you know, live, live his best life. So, right. It's just a shame that his voice doesn't sound as great as it used to, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the entire uh, Ginyu Force was uh, recast in Kai. I believe it was yeah. a bunch of, like, idol dudes, so... Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, that makes sense. I, I love that, that that if they had to change him, they went with, with that aspect, because that's they definitely fit that criteria. Yeah, it's a good idea. Plus, we also get that sweet Toku Sentai song in Kai Toku when they get Sentai. introduced. Toku yeah. Because it's the voice actors singing it, so it's good. I love when Rakum did that in this episode we just watched. He's just... To Ginyu Tok Sentai. <laughs> his, his mouth flaps were like were like Disney style, where they made sure to move his lips mm-hmm. exactly how those words would say. It's it's uh, so awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, in Funimation's original localization of the series, before they you know did renumbering and all that other fun stuff to make it back to two ninety one. Mm-hmm. How many episodes in this arc had the episode title "Friend or Foe?" Question <laughs> mark. What? Yeah. How many had the words friend or foe, or how many used the title friend or foe? How many just had the title of the episode be friend or foe? Are you serious? More than one? <laughs> More than one. So you're <laughs> correct on that. <laughs> Let's see. There's there's Raditz. Is he friend or foe? There's... <laughs> <laughs> it's actually Vegeta, just this Napa. arc. Just this arc. Not even taken into account. <laughs> uh, no the way. science stuff. Yeah. I'm going to guess lucky number three. Ooh, too much. It's two. There are two episodes. It's two. That, that, that's foe. one too many. <laughs> yeah. Argu- arguably two too many. Mm-hmm. But when they went back, they renumbered, they renamed things. So that way they didn't have the same title. Because, man. Gotcha. You got to, do you have a database? Just like look up like 20 weeks before. <laughs> like, oh, we already used that. Oops. Nope, no. Let's let's not bother with that. Is this really going to sell? Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to buy this? Some some uh, some sixteen year old kid named Doug is going to buy this and <laughs> think what's what's up with this? The Captain Ginyu quote unquote saga was the first DVDs, uh, one of the first DVDs I ever bought because that, that's when I like I had mm-hmm. my first. I had like a communion. I think I, I don't know if I'm Christian or Catholic. Whatever it was, whatever it was. <laughs> I had a party and they gave me money and it all went to Dragon Ball DVDs. Mm. I think I got near like five hundred to a thousand dollars somewhere like that Damn. from like all the cards I've got from my communion and I wouldn't open it until like the party was done in my room by myself and I had all that money and I told my parents, yeah, it was like two hundred bucks when actually it was like five hundred or a thousand dollars and all of it I discovered eBay and all the Dragon Ball DVDs were on there. I'm like, yes, let me get this. Where does it start? The Ginyu <laughs> Saga. Okay, sure. And then man, I like that you bought Dragon Ball with your your, your church money but With even my, more so yeah, i like that you money. lied to your parents I lied. about I, it they would not understand me spent i don't understand they're now looking back i'd be <laughs> mad too I, I didn't go for deals i was i was just like money? right yes please this is the first time i had this kind of m- much money in my hands and i was like yeah i'm <laughs> buying dragon ball dvds on ebay that's okay jesus loves the ginyu arc so he was like yes <laughs> perfect good go Man, with- what a time like literally like i would just see it was back when they had like the box sets and everything, and I think they had not. They had, were just starting the cell games. They were mm-hmm. starting the the great Saiyan Man and cell games at the same time, like releasing yep. DVDs and like that. They had a really weird gonna, DVD I, release schedule back then. Such where they a were release. I was out of I was order. Confused. Didn't matter. Where do I give my church money to? Just let me know, Funimation. <laughs> I don't know how to give you my church money. <laughs> yeah, man. Jeez. Uh, all right, I got one more for you. Okay. In what year was Raccoon made a playable character in a Dragon Ball video game? Now, I want to remind you, this episode uh-huh. aired October 1990. So, okay. 
Man, my first introduction to games was, was PlayStation Two. It wasn't until Budokai One. So mm-hmm. if, it's, if it's before, if, it's probably before that. But I'm gonna say Raccoon. It, it was always Ginyu and Raccoon that they made into characters from Budokai on. Like if if they they, they couldn't fit all five Ginyu Force members, mm-hmm. it was always just Ginyu and Raccoon. And so I, I mean, I'm gonna guess Budokai One. So that's a good guess. Uh, but it was actually Dragon Ball Z, the arcade game in Japan in 1993. But you were close. Oh, it's not the whole Ginyu I Force that's close. in there. It is just Ginyu, Raccoon, but also Bada is there. So, oh, as a playable character, yes, absolutely. Wow, I wonder yeah. why they chose him because it makes sense. Ginyu, obviously, and then Raccoon, obviously, because he's such a you see him fight a lot in mm-hmm. this. He uh, lasts the longest out of all of them, I think. So, yeah. But yeah, because I was thinking back, like, well, there's Ultimate Battle 22, because in that opening cutscene, it's Ginyu and Raccoon, end of list oh, for the, right. them, too. But Budokai 1 is also a good guess. Uh, it's probably. That's, a, I'm telling you, man, if it's any video game before that, I'd not gone back and played them. I, I don't know any knowledge about them, no nostalgia for them. I just figured you could give a guess, and you did. And I'm proud of you for that. I did. No, yeah, yeah. I got you, man. Uh, but that's it. That's all I got for trivia, man. So we're going to close this episode out. Want to thank everybody for listening. We love interacting with you, keeping you in the conversation, talking about our favorite franchise in the world. Just so you know, you can tweet at us at we got a pod and you can email us at we got a pod at gmail.com. Thank you, Rifty Beats, for letting us use your track, Kakarot theme hip hop trap remix. You can find it and other great tracks by Rifty on his SoundCloud. Thank you to our sponsors. Randy, where can yeah. the folks find you? You can find me at Saber underscore Breaker. What the about coolest you? coolest name ever. They can <laughs> find me at Jabaz Doug. Nice, man. <laughs> All right, everyone. So uh, please subscribe to the show. Tell your friends. Post a review. It uh, really helps us out. And we'll catch you next time. Bye for now. Bye for now.